Hi guys, Claudia Balloon here. Uh, this is just a check-in video, it's not a long one. Um, I lose track of time uh, <laughs> for various reasons and I noticed that people were messaging uh, wondering where I was. And um, I'm still here, <laughs> I just haven't made a video in a, in a while. Don't worry about me, I am still alive and still here. Sorry everything is messy, I need to clear everything up and I'm actually due to go to my grandma and granddad's in like 20 minutes so I just thought I'd say hi and kind of check in with you guys that were worried. Please don't worry if I do take absences from YouTube because that just means that um, I'm doing other stuff. Um, I'm really excited because, um, so I'm doing my masters at the moment as I think you guys know and I'm writing a novel, uh, the first draft is done but I'm editing it, that kind of thing. And um, because of various mental health issues and, and stuff uh, over the last year um, and, and last year, I uh, kind of, I had to go, I had to start doing extensions. So I was like, they were giving me a bit extra time. So I was like catching up and I finally caught up. And even better than that, um, I submitted a chapter of my novel um, and I got distinction, <laughs> which is really great. Um, and I got really great feedback on it. I'm, I'm really excited to put this novel out there uh, when it's done so I just feel really high on that because um, I know it sounds silly but you know when you just find that thing in life that is your thing and I think everyone's got one and I don't think everyone finds it necessarily because we live in a society where we don't all get a chance because do you ever think about the fact like when you when you watch like orchestras and things like that and Olympians and then you actually think about it and then you think well how would anyone even discover they were good at something like dressage or something you know how would you know you were good at skiing you know that's something that rich people do you know it's like instrument playing you know um i i got a guitar my grandma and granddad got me a guitar for one of my birthdays and i did some lessons so i was really lucky and we did lessons at school as well but you know i mean i've wanted a harp in forever like i would if i could choose any instrument to play it would be a harp or a lute i have thought about getting a lute but um have, they're really expensive <laughs> <laughs> it's not on the cards for me, unless I become very rich and successful off the back of my novels. But um, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm totally going off on a tangent, but the thing that I feel like I was put here to do is, is to write. Um, I've said this before, like, <laughs> I know I do YouTube and stuff like that, but it's not, um, it's not my, my passion and my sort of calling, if that makes sense. Um, that probably sounds really pretentious, but I think you'll probably know if, if you found the thing that, that you really connect with and that you love doing. And makes me want to be alive, really, because, you know, I'm like, I'm um, uh, often <laughs> not wanting to be alive. And I realise that I do want to be alive when I'm writing and it gives me that that thrill and excitement. And I'm just really happy. It got really good feedback. Um, I can't wait to get that published. So my, my master's actually finishes in September. I get my result in November. Um, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do after that because I did consider doing a PhD. I did think about doing that. But actually, I think I want to focus on the novel, getting it published, and actually getting some stuff published. I, I think. I think that's what I want to do. Um, I will miss the kind of academic stuff because I enjoy it. Um, <laughs> and it would be kind of cool to, uh, to get a PhD and be called doctor. Just, <laughs> just like, it'll be funny because my, my granddad's a doctor and... Um, I don't know, it just it just would amuse me because mostly because of Doctor Who. That sounds so silly, but I can't I can't lie, you know, part of the masters <laughs> I want to be called Master of the Arts. The Doctor Who obsession has just like seeped out into every aspect of my life. It would be cool to introduce yourself as the doctor. But no, I don't think I'm gonna do I don't think I'm gonna do the PhD. Um don't hold me to it, but I think I want to I wanna just try and write and put it out there because you live once you live once, um, we think. <laughs> we don't know for sure. But um, I think I will uh, be frustrated with myself if I don't just put everything into it and go for it. Because everything that's kind of happened in my life, when you when I've kind of just gone ahead with something, it usually has, has gone well. Even if it hasn't, I've usually learned something from it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. So I'm working on the novel a lot, which is why, and, and my course, obviously, like it's coming up to the end of my master's, so the workload is quite heavy. And I was catching up, which I'm not anymore. Like I, I, finally, I finally got back. Um, I'm in sync with everyone else now. Um, but I love it so much. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm gonna make some more videos. Um, I've got one coming up, which is about the royal family because we've just had the Platinum Jubilee here in the UK, which is weird when you're not a royalist. <laughs> 
not so royalist seeing that happen, it's bizarre. And I kind of want to get into that in a video. Not in a way that's anti the individuals in the family, but the actual the actual setup, the notion of having a royal family in this day and age doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> and it's one of those things where you realise you're you know, other people are, are really going nuts over it. And I and I just can't figure it out because I'm thinking that's just that's just a lady that was born into this role and became you know, it, it would have been a struggle for her in some ways, Mater you know, in a material way, in a financial way, there'd be lots of benefits, but also to have to to hide your feelings, your political feelings, any of your ideas, like even your facial expressions, everything, in case you, you show someone, you know, what you think about something, is a very sad sort of life to live. And, and I kind of think about it like that, I guess. It just doesn't seem healthy to me. And I, I am going to make a video which will probably be controversial, but I don't care, I've been thinking about this. Um, I actually think it's really bad that in 2022, I mean, I, I, this is not the Jubilee video now, but uh, the gist of it is that I was watching a lot of this and the kids, the Cambridge kids were involved in this. Is it not really bad, if not abusive, I'm not saying the family, I mean the system, to put that eight year old boy, George, in that situation and, and it's kind of like a weird blackmail sort of, I'm not wording this right, I will in the video, you know, oh, this is, the Queen did it, you know, she got rid of everything that was herself and she became a mascot for us all and now we don't know anything about her and we project onto her and now we celebrate her because because she kept calm and carried on and, and, and all that stuff. We're kind of grooming George into that and all I can think about is, is first of all, it's going to be damaging to any child, surely, to grow up literally thinking you're better than someone else because of your your heritage, like who your parents are, like, you know. Uh, I'm not saying that, that you know, the, that, that makes the kids bad or anything, but that's not healthy. And also, do people not, I don't, do people not think, you know, in any other family, that would be considered really bad to tell a child, this is your future, this is what you want to do. <laughs> We're all expecting it of you, we all want to see you, you're a child, you're a mascot, you're our property. Um, and if you opt out, you're going to disappoint us. Because that's what happens when people opt out, you know? It's 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 very dodgy to me. And I, I've been thinking about that a lot uh, from the, in terms of the actual family themselves. Um, and, and how, I think Megan and Harry maybe think about that, you know? I'm interested in Diana because she probably had BPD. Um, kind of how the media turned on her, the media turned on Megan. The framing of Harry has been deranged. Um, that's something else I've been doing, which I can treat you to. Over the past year and a half, I have been compiling uh, pictures of different uh, articles articles in different uh, magazines about Megan. Um, I've just been collecting them because I thought in the future it would make a good video and I've got so many now and I think that'll make a good video at some point. I've also got another Umbrella Academy video coming. I know I said that last year. <laughs> it really is coming now. Um, the Diego one will be out in like I think just before Umbrella Academy season three comes out which would be great. Um, but yeah, something Harry said about, you know, the family being trapped, and I was really thinking about that, and I was thinking, like, what if... What if that little boy doesn't want to be part of this? <laughs> what if... What if he wants to be a builder, or he wants to be an artist, you know? What if he wants to make those choices? And it just seems weird, in any other situation, that would be unhealthy, wouldn't it? To, to make a child think, this is what you have to do, or you opt out of it. Maybe that's me being neurodiverse and also LGBT because I'm used to the idea of you're assumed something and then the pressure on you having to opt out of it and not knowing how people are going to react, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I've got a video coming about that. Um, I've got some more UK political videos. Oh, I don't even want to get into that here. It's just so depressing right now because I can't stand the current Labour Party, yet the current Tories are evil. <laughs> Like, actually, you know, it's it's really bad, it's going into fascism. Labour are also going going for that kind of David Cameron-esque Tory vibe, so there's kind of no left option right now, and it's really depressing. I'm not going to get into that here. But I've got a load of stuff coming. Um, uh, some mental health stuff coming. Um, a, a video about BPD and complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I've been thinking about this for a while. And uh, my theory, and, and some of my friends, we were talking about this, that actually... How often is it that, that a woman is diagnosed with BPD but actually it's complex post-traumatic stress disorder? Is BPD a, a form of complex post-traumatic stress disorder? Um, 
I'm actually getting a, I'm, I'm having to, I'm going to go and, uh, and see a doctor soon about this diagnosis because they're wondering if actually I might not have BPD, which is, you know, quite, <laughs> it's different for me. Um, but it might just be complex post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, which makes more sense to me. Um, so that, that whole diagnosis might change, which will be odd for me because I thought I had BPD, but it might be that I don't, or it might be that they're the same thing or that they, you know, they cross over, but definitely complex post-traumatic stress disorder. So I want to make a video about that. Definitely. There's just a lot of things to talk about at the moment, um, that are going on worldwide and then stuff that's more UK specific and, and just general, general things. The, um... The Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, which has been really big on social media, that I didn't want to make any comment on because it was in trial, um, has been interesting in terms of... I, I, was, I watched quite a lot of it um, because I was interested in how, how Amber Heard was, was supposedly diagnosed with BPD and, and did I think that was accurate and how was that being used. Um, so I want to make a video about that, but less about the, the trial itself and more about uh, ideas about BPD what is BPD, uh, how do we diagnose women with that, etc, etc, because I think there's a lot of ableism. There's been this resurgence of, of, of hatred against borderline personality disorder, um, which is usually a diagnosis anyway, whether I have it or not, I, I might have complex post-traumatic stress disorder, but with BPD, it, it usually comes from, from abuse, it usually comes from childhood abuse, um, or an abusive background. Um, so, you know, whether or not I have it, it could, you know, same thing <laughs> for me, you know, same same route, all that kind of stuff. But it might be complex post-traumatic stress disorder. But, but you know, I think the way that's being spoken about has been quite worrying. Uh, being tied to Amber Heard, who is a figure that a lot of people really hate, uh, and the BPD ableism being kind of tied into that is, is really worrying for people with BPD or people who uh, might actually just have complex post-traumatic stress disorder which has got diagnosed as BPD. That's too much to get into here, um, but there's a lot of things that I would like to talk about. So I will see you soon. This is going to be, this is more long than I expected it to be, but um, I just wanted to check in. Um, I hope you're all really well. If you've got anything you want me to talk about, put it in the comment, the comment section. Um, you know what I'm like, I'm not like a regular YouTuber, <laughs> so it will just be, you know, sporadic and when I have the time. But um, there's a lot to talk about right now. And uh, I've missed, I've missed vlogging. <laughs> I really like just talking to you guys. It's such a de-stressor for me. Um, okay, so I uh, love you loads. And I will see you really soon. And I hope that you're all really well. Um, yeah, alright, love you. Bye.